Well, good morning. I hope you're all doing well. Well, like the title line said, I've got a bunch of stuff I'd like to talk about today. Uh, got the 45 in. Love it. There's a couple things that I would like to change up just a little bit, and one of them I'm going to show you today. Don't even have it assembled right now. This was basically just for testing. <clears throat> so, you go and you get this gun, and the first thing you want to do is grab a bunch of ammo. That's one of the first things I wanted to do is figure out what ammo to work out of it. And, well, because I'm doing this video, I have an ammo that I think is working pretty well. I'm still not there yet. I've tried several different ammos, not happy with anything yet, not happy with anything I've made yet. The one that I'll be using here in a minute, not going to show it to you because I'm getting close, <laughs> but uh, it's getting there. I need to make it lighter and uh, do a few more changes to it, but I will be testing it in a second. Uh, one of the first things I wanted to do was put a Donny FL suppressor on it, but here's the problem. When you got a Donny FL suppressor and you remove the uh, flash hider and the nut off the end of the barrel so you have access to it, you run into the first little hitch, and that is the uh, air tank is long enough that the suppressor can't go on. So, first thing I needed to do was uh, make an adapter. Well, here we go. Uh, this time yesterday, this was a chunk of 6 millimeter rifle barrel. Good, high quality stainless steel. Uh, now it is an adapter, uh, as you can see there. Uh, so, a couple changes that had to occur even with this. I couldn't make just a simple adapter because I had to uh, consider this skirt and where it was going to land on this skirt. It needed to be just long enough that it would get the suppressor just past this without making it too long. Got that accomplished easy enough. So, I'm going to go ahead and put those together. <clears throat> Maybe uh, while I screw this together, because there's about 10 million threads to get this uh, up and going, uh, let's talk about bullets. Um, to make a decent bullet, you've had people for 300 years trying to do that, and uh, probably longer than that. And uh, they've done all the math, they've done all the geometry, they've uh, figured out what will work and what won't work. Uh, a person sent me a picture of a bullet yesterday, a pellet for this gun, and it looked like a Hershey's Kiss, and they said it fired real well. And my guess is it did fire real well. But uh, you don't want it just to fire real well, you want it to hit a target at some distance out. And uh, that goes back into the math of a bullet. And uh, well, this really does thread on forever. There we go. So once this thing is on, you got a good fit just past the air tank. Now you're ready to play. So there we go. But back to the math. Here's a typical 50 BMG round. Uh, this curve right here is called the OGIV curve. And uh, this is the base of the bullet. We won't get into the boat tail and stuff like that. But the OGIV curve, uh, the bullet can't be all that. It needs some base to stabilize it. It can't have too much base, because if you have too much base, you're going to have drag in the barrel, and it actually slows the round down. So usually it's one-to-one -one or a little bit more on base. Uh, then you take the actual thing that you're firing out of, the pressure that it has, what it's trying to accomplish. Some people are going to be out there trying to rapid-fire six rounds really, really quick. Uh, you have to consider that with the bullet. And I'm leaning towards the idea that the bullet or pellet's going to have to be round-nosed and even lighter than what I've got inside this magazine. Um, uh, if I had to guess, it's going to be 175 grain or less. That's the direction I'm heading in. So the one I'm testing today is not my finished product, but I'm going in that general direction. But I uh, still wanted to test it. I think it's going to be positive, so I thought, what the heck, I'll go ahead and... Uh, record a video at the same time. Uh, the other thing I mentioned was a preview of the 58 cal. Maybe you got the Zeus 72 cal and you bought the uh, combo that had the 58 cal barrel. So you got a barrel something like this and you got a little part there. Well, what next? Probably telling yourself, well, it's simple enough. This piece goes in, it's gonna thread in. This actually goes into the gun first and locks. Once it's locked, the barrel goes in and gets adjusted. That will be the next video. Once I shoot up this ballistic gelatin here in a few minutes, it's going right back in the fridge. Tonight I'll melt it, let it cure overnight, and uh, you'll see the 58 cal firing tomorrow. But the 58 cal is not without its problems. I don't know if I'm gonna get close enough for you to see this. See if this light can help me out here a little bit. Uh, maybe you're able to see it right about there. This has got rifling right up to the end. You don't do that. <laughs> you have a relief in there, half an inch, three quarter inch, depending on what the bullet or pellet is, uh, uh, for the round of seat. This is rifling right up to the end. 
So it creates a unique problem. That problem is you're either going to get something that fits really, really good in the lines and grooves and have to force it in with your thumb or a pry bar, or you get something that's on the looser side so it basically rides on the lines and grooves, but then you have air bypass. Uh, what I've worked on, let me grab one here, is four or five different uh, pellets, each one getting thinner and thinner on the skirt, the back skirt of the bullet, or pellet, however you want to call it, where when the air hits it, it forces the skirt into the lands and grooves, and at that point, you have all the air in behind it. You don't have air escaping around it. If any air escapes around it, you're losing power. Tomorrow, this will hit the ballistic gelatin and probably a container of water or something because I don't want to mess it up in the process. When I get done, what I'm hoping to see are perfect little lands and grooves on this pellet. If it happens that way, awesome. If not, back to the drawing board. What I have found is if you have the 58 cal, uh, 575 fits in kind of loose. I'm thinking that a perfect number is going to be about a 578 or so. But again, you get a 578, 579, you're really forcing it in. So back to today's task, which is firing this... Uh, S45 into ballistic gelatin with these new uh, pellets, maybe digging a few out, see what they look like. Um, the last thing I would touch on is if somebody's playing a practical joke at the uh, corporate side, I would love to know. I was a mechanic and then a trainer and then a master tech for uh, 30 years. And one of the fun things we like to do, if a guy had an engine all tore apart and we were bored, we might go by and throw a little 10 millimeter bolt in the pile. So they get down to the end of the job and they're looking on their tray and hey, they got this extra bolt. It's kind of scary. Anyway, so I get this uh, S45, I get it out of the box, I look at everything and I've got this little bitty extra screw in there and I'm hoping it's just extra because if not, I don't have a clue what it goes to. So anyway, I got an S45, I got it charged. I'm going to get the magazine in. Got the suppressor on, so none of the neighbors will be calling the police. And, oh, and uh, safety off. Okay, this is normally the time you hear a boom fire. Okay. Folks, I cannot tell you what happened with that first shot. That's a little bit scary. Uh, I can tell you something happened. But anyway, um, I do have an empty magazine and I have five holes in the ballistic gelatin. So one of those holes fired two. Now, the pathways through look awesome, as you can see there. Got some beautiful little pathways. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. This one looks a little bit odd. It's kind of puffed out. I'm guessing two pellets went down through that hole. Uh, it was able to do it. Did it just fine. At the other end, I had a uh, computer. This is how I get rid of my old computers. And... Uh, Looks real good, flattened out real nice. Did a pretty good job there. That one hit the uh, steel at an angle, tore it up pretty good. Uh, the others, they are physically in the steel, so they were able to go through about, oh, six, seven inches of ballistic gelatin, and four out of the six, okay, there's the third one. This is probably the one where it carried two, went in kind of sideways. Still all tore up. Did a pretty decent job of flattening that sucker out. And you have three that punctured steel. So seven inches of ballistic gelatin still went through the steel wall of the side of a computer. So like any test, you don't really know what's going to happen. Some things are going to go a little sideways sometimes. But uh, it fired all six pellets. In one of the cases, it fired two at the same time uh, and fired them pretty quick. Probably tomorrow when I do the uh, 58 cal test, I'll finish the 58 cal test by uh, maybe rapid firing this thing six times, make sure everything's working okay. But again, it's wonderful. It's a great, great 45 cal. I love it. Um, and if you love it and want to have a uh, suppressor on where you're not changing out air tanks and stuff like that, 
we're probably going to start building this adapter pretty quick. Uh, I'll run out a six millimeter barrel pretty quick, but uh, what we'll do is we'll get the same quality stainless steel that makes those uh, custom six millimeter barrels. So you're going to get the same thing either way. Be a high quality stainless steel. It's a one to one fit on the thread. You've heard me say that word over and over again, but it's important. If you screw something on and it's about halfway on and you can take it and wiggle it back and forth, that's a problem. Uh, if you can screw it halfway on and wiggle it back and forth and it's on a suppressor, that's a really, really big problem. You never want to have that. You want to have something that's nice and snug without tearing it apart. Then you got uh, uh, the metal to aluminum contact. At that point, never lose to use Loctite or anything, whether you're using my adapter or somebody else's. Always use like a single drop of oil or something like that. Whenever you have dissimilar metals, add heat and pressure. They like to fuse together. So a little bit of lubricant there so that doesn't happen. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I had fun doing it. And I will see you tomorrow with the uh, 58 Cal test. Take care.